state arson investigator. Also took the stand, Special Agent Kevin uh, Heimroll examined remnants in the Avery's burn pit and found evidence believed to be linked to, uh, Stephen, Avery, uh, to Stephen Avery and Teresa Holbach, a, a rivet from a pair of blue jeans. It was this clothing rivet that was identified, uh, easily identified or at least identified with writing uh, right on the rivet? Yes. And what does the rivet say? The rivet is stamped Daisy Fuentes. Now, I understand uh, you kind of have a problem with the rivet because they only found one rivet. And something else, you know, you'd wonder why one rivet survived, mm -hmm. but there wasn't a button or any other rivets. Absolutely. However, this is still some pretty good testimony for the state. You know, it's like the icing on the cake um, showing, you know, that the, Teresa Halbach may have been there, and then, of mm -hmm. course, bringing on uh, uh, Teresa's sister to testify mm -hmm. about those mm -hmm. genes. All right. After the break, uh, you were talking about the sister. We're going to hear more about that rivet from Teresa Halbach's sister. On the final day of uh, week two, the sister of Teresa Halbach connected her murdered sister with evidence found in a burn pit near Avery's home. Teresa's 15-year-old sister, Katie Halbach, said she remembered teasing Teresa after she showed her a pair of Daisy Fuentes jeans that she'd bought. Investigators found rivets, as we said earlier, from that brand of jeans in the burn pit on Avery's property where Halbach's bone fragments were also found. She also told jurors she got a blue lanyard at EAA two years ago and gave it to Teresa as a gift. The fob with Teresa's car key found in Steve Avery's trailer a few days after her disappearance. Also on uh, Friday, a juror was dismissed due to a death in the family, leaving now 15 jurors, and Dean Strang renewed a motion to suppress all of the evidence seized from Stephen Avery's trailer, garage, burn pit, and burn barrels. Now, Strang's motion was denied last year. He says law enforcement violated the one warrant, one search principle. Strang says Avery's burn pit should have been searched that first night. Now, Judge Willis will rule on this motion at a later date. Following those arguments, uh, Teresa Hallbach's 15 year-old sister Katie took the stand and talked about that rivet that we spoke of earlier. How do you know that she had a pair of Daisy Fuentes jeans? Uh, well, one day she showed me a new pair of jeans she had and I noticed that the brand was Daisy Fuentes and I knew that Daisy Fuentes was an older person so I told Teresa that she has old person jeans. You showed us the rivets. What's um what do you what do you close the waist <coughs> with on these jeans? A button. Does that kind of look like the more or less like the rivets, except a little bit bigger? Yeah. I'll tug at the heartstrings there with Katie, but also let's talk about this uh, motion that they are renewing once again. Uh, actually, I think that that motion is is very important. It was uh, denied. The motion had been made back in June, and now they're making some serious allegations that uh, police officers have some inconsistent testimony, giving me a basis to renew the motion. Uh, but in Wisconsin, there has never been a case on point on this one search, one warrant principle. Mm -hmm. So I think if there is a conviction in this case, you're probably gonna be seeing some new law made uh, from our Supreme Court on that issue. All right. Hey, the uh, DNA analyst whose work freed Stephen Avery from prison testified. She presented damning evidence against Stephen Avery. Sherry Culhane told the jury that six bloodstains in Teresa Holbach's SUV contained Stephen Avery's DNA profile. And Holbach's RAV4 key contained Avery's DNA. Colhane said Avery's DNA profile occurs once in every four quintillion people. Colhane said a bullet fragment from Avery's garage had Hallbach's DNA on it. Were there any other profiles developed on the bullet besides Teresa Hallbach's? No. Was Teresa Hallbach's profile the only profile that you found on that bullet? Yes. Were there any mixtures? No. Now, Carl Hayne uh, testified that her DNA got into a sample used to monitor that testing process for contamination. I felt as if I was far enough away from my workbench not to introduce my DNA, but apparently I was incorrect. Now, your DNA was, <coughs> did not come up on the bullet, did it? No. Obviously, though, I mean, this is a big break for the defense to jump on. 
Uh, this is a huge break for the defense. I even have cases where I've had lab analysts DNA show up in a sample and you start to question the whole process. So the state's going to say that this, you know, didn't actually affect any of this process here. But I think, you know, you can expect that the defense is going to jump all over this and question the whole process. And how hard is it to argue to a jury, you know, this, this um, analyst has been doing this for 23 mm -hmm. years. Why doesn't she watch CSI and decide to, you know, wear a mask? I know. When I heard that, I was going, ooh.